Hello. This video is going to talk about the rectus sheath and the arcuate line. So I've drawn two different cross sections through the anterior abdomen. You can see uh, rectus abdominis in cross section in both cases. And these horizontal bars are representing the three layers of the oblique muscles. So this upper slice will have been made somewhere above the umbilicus, this lower slice somewhere down low below the umbilicus. And we're gonna look at the difference of what happens with the aponeuroses of these different oblique muscles depending on what level you're, you're making an incision. So the external oblique is going to have an aponeurosis that will always pass anterior to the rectus abdominis muscles regardless of whether you are above or below. So we'll draw that like this. Okay. That's the aponeurosis of the external oblique. The aponeurosis of the internal oblique, when we are higher than the umbilicus, it actually splits itself and wraps around either side. of the rectus abdominis. When we are below the umbilicus, we no longer see that wrapping of the internal oblique aponeurosis. Instead, like external oblique, the two layers just both wrap anterior to rectus abdominis. <coughs> Excuse me. Lastly, we have transverse abdominis, which is going to pass posterior if we're up here. <coughs> and here also wraps anterior. Now when we are down here, with all those layers wrapping in front of the rectus abdominis, the only thing left behind is a layer of fascia. And this is called transversalis fascia. And the point at which this change happens is called the arcuate line. So this is the pattern below the arcuate line, and this is the pattern above the arcuate line.